The mission of a local nonprofit is to engage, restore, and empower individuals in our community to reach their fullest potential. Coming up on Polk Place, we'll hear about a Make It Okay program. Make sure you stick around. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm Brian Lacey and joining me in studio is Jessica Lawson. Jessica is the Community Relations Associate for Peace River Center. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. For those that may or may not know, talk a little bit about Peace River Center. What exactly is Peace River Center? Sure, so we are the community's behavioral health nonprofit. So we offer a wide array of crisis programs as well as we have inpatient units uh, for crisis stabilization. We have a ton of recovery programs. So we call recovery if someone has a mental illness and then is walking in their recovery of that mental illness, they can access services and programs. And we also have a separate um, side of the house that is for our victim services. So we do, uh, help domestic violence survivors as well as sexual assault survivors. Now in the opening, we heard about the Make It Okay program, new program you guys are offering. Let's talk a little bit about it. What exactly is Make It Okay? Sure, so this program was actually started by another organization out of Minnesota, but has caught on in Iowa, and it's now coming to Florida. And it's basically a community campaign to reduce mental illness stigma and to encourage individuals to start meaningful conversations that will help not only eliminate the stigma, but most importantly, connect people to resources so that they can get the help they need. You use the word stigma. What exactly is a stigma when it comes to to mental illness. Sure, so one of the exercises that we do in the Make It Okay campaign is, you know, when we think about cancer patients, we think about words like brave and survivor. But oftentimes when we think about mental illness, the words are not as nice because of the way that mental illnesses are incorrectly portrayed in the media. And you know, a lot of times the stories we're hearing are not always the best representation. A lot of times people think mental illness and think that someone might be violent, but the, actually the opposite is true. Individuals that have a mental illness are more likely to be the victims of a crime than they are to actually commit a crime. So stigma is that negative set of beliefs that a society has about something. Well, why do you think it's, it's a negative belief? Why is there a, a stigma associated with mental illness? I think a lot of times it's because we don't have the conversations and because people don't realize just how common it is. So there's this perception that, you know, people are crazy or wacko, like these negative words that we use, when really if they get treatment and they're in recovery, you know, we see these individuals every day and, you know, they come to our club success program or they're in our psychosocial rehabilitation. They're putting in the work. They're learning about their mental illness. They're managing it just like you would any other medical condition. So I think that that's really that the unknown and people not asking the questions or being afraid to ask the questions or saying the wrong thing that really just keeps that stigma going. So we really need to eliminate that. In kind of our pre-interview, you talked about conversations. And one of the things that you said is the proper way to have a conversation. Let's talk about conversations and, and say you have a, a friend or a loved one, family member that, uh, that has a mental illness. Coach me through talking through somebody with a, uh, with, with a mental illness and what my reaction, the things that I should listen for. Absolutely, and one of the things we point out in the Make It Okay campaign is that this isn't, these aren't conversation topics if someone is explaining that they're in crisis and they need immediately, you know, immediate emotional or mental health support. That is a case where you'd call 911 or you would call our crisis line. These are conversations that are more casual that might happen in a group of friends or with coworkers. One of the videos is the example of a coffee shop and you know, how was your weekend? Oh, not that great because with my depression. And all of a sudden you have this big, you know, ooh, Black how do cloud. I respond? You know, do, is it silence? 
you know, do I try to make the person feel better? So one of the things we say is, you know, think about how you're responding so that it opens up the conversation further. If they feel like discussing it, you know, do you want to tell me more about that? Or I'm sorry you're having to go through that. Is there anything I can do to help? So instead of, oh, I have those issues too, or oh, I deal with that too, you know, bringing it back to yourself, really try to keep the conversation focused on that individual, letting them know that you respect that they told you that and that you're interested in helping them and that you're just a safe person to share that with. So some of the things that we encourage people to say is anything that you would say to someone who broke their foot. Can I drive you to an appointment or can I bring you a meal by? Do you need help, you know, taking care of the kids while you're down and out? You know, we try to make sure that people are understanding, you know, mental illnesses are treatable medical conditions just like diabetes. So you want to make sure that you're putting that same effort forward when you're talking with someone. How can we as a society prevent a stigma? Sure. Starting the conversations, asking the questions, making sure that you know the resources. So, you know, it's one thing to be a great person to talk, but then if I don't know the local resources like Peace River or, you know, any place else that can get them help, that's really important. And to make sure that you're sharing that with them, you know, don't pressure them, but say, you know, hey, I've heard that Peace River has a crisis line if you need, or, you know, they have inpatient stabilization if you feel like, you know, that's something that you need to kind of get you back on the right track. Or I like to share my own personal experience. So I've gone through therapy because I find it helpful. So I'll share that with others, you know. As you had mentioned, this is a program that's that's started in other states. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys are incorporating it in your in your daily day-to-day sure. uh, -day operations. Absolutely. So it's a lot of what we do anyway is just encouraging people to understand more about mental illness. So in addition to understanding the stigma piece, we also want them to understand about mental illnesses in general. You know, much like we wouldn't say, oh, you know, she's cancer. We wouldn't want somebody to say she has depression or she is bipolar. No, she has bipolar disorder. She has cancer. So educating on that and then also offering it to the community. So we've done a lot of presentations for organizations. Um, for example, local community organizations, young professionals, um, whole counties have asked us to come in and present because um, unfortunately they have been touched by suicide in their organization. So just being able to equip people with those tools to know more about mental illness, understand stigma, and then also have those meaningful conversations that then connect people to resources, that's really what we try to do throughout. In connecting with those resources, where can folks find out more, not necessarily through you, because everybody is attached to the electronic right. genius in our hand, um, but where, where's a good start for resources? Sure, we actually have a Make It Okay page on our website that is great because um, it goes through a lot of the different scenarios. And then there's also the original Make It Okay that started out of Minnesota that also has more in-depth information. They've done some great video series to really have people explaining, you know, this is what it was like for me. Like there's a, a gentleman who shares a story and he says that when he let his coworkers know that he had a mental illness diagnosis, they were like, but you're not crazy. And he said, I didn't say I was crazy. You know, I said I have a mental illness diagnosis. So stories like that, um, there's tons of resources, again, on our page, and then it links back to the original Make It Okay page. Um, and it gives you tools for, you know, what to say, what not to say, things to be mindful of inspire those at home to get involved you know it may be the person that's going through something but it's it's kind of all of our responsibility i think the big thing is just that mental illness impacts us all so whether it is a family or you know a family member or a friend or a coworker, one in five people will have a mental illness on any in any given year so if you're in a room with you know, 10 people, that's two people in that room that more than likely are struggling at any point. So really understanding that stigma can prevent people, ready for this, 10 years. They can prevent people up to 10 years from seeking treatment because they're afraid of what people might think. So by being that positive person who sees them and understands them and connect them to resources, it really helps just take down that barrier and get them the treatment they need and deserve. Well, Jess, thanks for all the information and uh, always good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Now is the time to start talking about mental illness. Through the Make It Okay campaign, Peace River Center aims to help everyone in our community learn talk and share about mental illness. Now, if you need more information, you can give them a call at 
1-800-273-0575 or look them up on the web at www.peacerivercenter.org.